In today's quick Thursday tip, we're going to talk about how to send an email to a user's manager after they filled out a form. So this core little skill, we're going to use the form, we're going to use an Outlook connector, and we're going to use the Office 365 users connectors to do this very important but basic level task. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to send an email to a user's manager after they fill out a form. So what we're going to do is just take a couple of our little core skills. We're going to use the Outlook connector. We're going to use the Office 365 users connectors. We're going to incorporate a forms last submit and just kind of go through this key scenario. And the reason is I'm doing this one is one of my users over at training.powerapps911.com. Amanda, she said, hey, how do you do this thing? And I'm like, oh. Well, then I didn't actually have a video to point her to, so now I want to give her a simple video that answered this question because everyone's had to do this in one of their apps before. So I'll switch over to my desktop and take a look. Here on my desktop, you can see I've kind of framed out a simple app for us ahead of time. So I got a little header bar up at the top, I've got a gallery, and then I've got a form control that allows me to edit the items or create new ones, right? And so if we do play, you can be like, oh yeah, I want to edit Greg. So we click on Greg, we say edit. There's Greg's edits and close out of there. We can save his data or exit out of there. And so what Amanda asked was, hey, I want to be able to send an email. So if they change something, like for example, say that we modify Greg's record here and we change his favorite color from purple to red and we sit save here, we know that saved back to my SharePoint list, but now I also want to send an email notification to the manager. So how would I do that? So some people say, oh, I'll go write a flow and have that happen on the, have flow say every time an item in SharePoint is modified, I want to trigger. You could do that, but what I prefer in a case like this where it's very straightforward what I want, and I know that the user's causing the action, we're going to have it all happen here in the app. So what we're going to do is first off, we're going to do the easy thing, right? We're going to say, all right, I'm going to throw a button on the screen because we're going to write the logic in an easy place before we incorporate in a more difficult place. And so in order to get a user's manager, what we're going to need is the Office 365 users connector. So we go over here to data sources and we search for Office 365, we can see that there's Office 365 users. So we'll add one of those connections. And so that'll pull into my app and actually to take advantage of this, we're gonna throw a label over here. And so what we're gonna look for here is we're gonna say Office 365 users, there we go. And now if you go through here, look at that, manager. Now you see manager and manager V2. Anytime you see a V something, you always want the latest one. So we're gonna use V2. And it says, hey, I just need the user's principal name or email. Oh, well, I can use the user function like this to get the current user's email address. Now, all of a sudden, this gives me an error. You're like, ah, why? The reason for that is because this is returning a record, which means the whole row, my managers, all their data. I just want my manager's email address. So if I do a dot mail, look at that. There is Nicola's email address, Nicola at PowerApps911.com. So there's who we want to send an email to. So first part of the problem solved. There's the email address we need. And then this, if Chewy logged in, it would show me, right? Whoever your manager is based on Azure AD, that's where this is all coming from. So then now we want to send an email. Well, to send an email, we need another connector. So I'm going to go back over here to my data, and I'm going to say Office 365. And this time we're going to go to Office 365 Outlook. Add a connection there. And so then now what we want to do is we're going to say Office 365 Outlook. And then now if we start going down, we're going to see that there is a send email and a send email v2. Same deal. Always use the latest one. So we're going to use v v2. Who do I want to send it to? Well, this puts out the text of the address. It wants text. That looks perfect to me. So I'm going to put this right here. We're going to do a comma, and then we would just say something like subject here, and then the body, so then body here, and we'll worry about filling those in a little bit later. And then I'm going to do a comma again. I'm going to use the optional parameter of CC, and I'm going to CC, oh, if I can do it, CC the actual user that is logged in. So in this case, I'm going to CC myself. So that way I will see this email come across because Nicole is going to get this in a second. We'll do it like that and like that. And if you're unfamiliar with how the Office 365 Outlook send email works, I have a whole video on that. I'll link to that somewhere up there, but we're not gonna get into the specifics of how that one works. I have a whole series on that one, but that looks good. So let's hit play. Let's press our button. I see the dots or the ants marching. 
I get out of there. I don't see errors. So give me one second. Let me go through my email. Look at that. I got an email to Nicola, uh, CC from Shane, from Shane. Remember, these emails will always come from the user that pressed the button. And then the subject is right here. The body is here. Perfect. That's exactly what Amanda wanted. So we've got what she wanted. Now, I want to go a step further because I always go a step further. So this code does what I want, but I really want this code to be whenever they submit a form, right? So I'm going to copy this code. And a lot of people are tempted to put the code here. They're going to be like submit form, colon this. No, 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 right? There should never be code after submit form on a button. If you want something to happen after this form gets submitted, what I want you to do is click on the form itself, so form one. And forms have a property called on success. And so we're going to say, hey, on success. So when this form successfully gets submitted or a new one gets created, doesn't matter. Anytime that they pr press submit form and it su succeeds, this is going to happen and it's going to send an email. And now, because we're in this context, maybe here instead of subject here, you could be like um, title of changed user, right? And I'm just making this simple, simple, but you get the idea. What you're going to do is you're going to say and. And so then forms have a special property called form one dot last submit. That is the record that just got submitted to the database or to your data source. And this isn't SharePoint specific in any way, right? Any data source, Dataverse, SQL, it doesn't matter. Last submit and then dot title. And so then now it would say truck driver. So you could do the same thing down here in the body, right? The whole, if you highlight this form one dot last submit, you can see Look, there's all the things it knows. Everything there is to know about Greg. And there's not much. He's not a very interesting dude. <laughs> I love Greg. But you get the idea, right? Is that you have this full access. So now if we say play, let's go edit Chewy instead. So we'll go we'll X out of this. We'll click right here on Chewy. We'll say edit this. And we'll change Chewy's favorite color to orange. We'll say save. Now what should happen is not only did it get changed over in SharePoint, we know that works, but now there should be an email for me. One sec, let me find it. Look at that. Title of changed user, nap taker. Body here, kind of didn't change the body, but that did what you wanted. Yeah. So there you go, folks. That is what we're after. And remember, this was just for us to figure it out, so we can get rid of that. This button was just for us to figure it out, so we can get that. And so now we're back to our nice, lovely app, but we added that next layer of functionality. So that's it. That's what I've got for you today. Hopefully this helps Amanda, most specifically, but no, all of you, right? This is just a reminder sometimes that we forget that these core skills are very fundamental. And so we overlook talking about easy things. So I thought it was a good, good excuse for us to dive in here and just go over some basic stuff. Remember, I'll link to the videos on um, last, or last Submit, the form modes, right? There's a bunch of different videos that kind of complement the things you just learned in here as well. And of course, if you're a subscriber over at training.powerapps911.com, like Amanda is, you can download this working app and just grab it. Not that there's a lot of interesting code, but some of the real complicated apps, it's nice to be able to download the app. All right, with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.